So what I'm going to tell you about this water heater, I am by no means I'm telling you how to fix your water heater by bypassing anything. This is at your own risk, and I'm just at an informative video. There was a recall on these Richmond in rim uh, water heaters. I went and replaced the whole thing down below except for the gas valve, and it still didn't fix it. And I found a guy that made a video, and a seen how he fixed it so i'm going to fix mine in the future i'm going to replace the part itself but i wanted to give you a kind of a, a short video show you how it's done and how stupid simple it is to get your system back on again um like i said not telling you to bypass it it's a safety feature for people to not scald themselves but evidently the fuse that they use for the, the sensor is not the right fuse it's been a major issue and they have a big recall out and they'll replace it for you if you have the receipt if you bought it in the store uh, but they won't cover the cost for plumbers so it was back in march uh, 2022 yeah so there you go there you have it Enjoy the rest of the video. If you got a Richmond water heater, and your pilot light's not lighting up, chances are you with a thousand, a hundred million thousand other people are having the same problem. And what the problem is, is over here. Here's your thermocouple. And there's this white little connection right over here. And it's a sensor. And that sensor is a fuse, basically, to prevent people from being scalded. And so, it malfunctions. And after doing your own troubleshooting, you think, okay, the uh, the sensor, the thermocouple is bad. So, I replaced the thermocouple. And then fixed it. I replaced the whole freaking, the, the thermocouple, and the, the gas, the pilot light, and all, the whole thing. That was 50 bucks. It still didn't fix it. And you come to find out there's a stupid little sensor right here that if you take and you remove it, I'm gonna take and take the thermocouple back out and we're gonna take this sensor out and then we'll shove this back up in there and where it gets uh makes contact with the head and uh we'll see that it works. So this water heater it's made by the same company called REEM, R-H-E-E-M. So they're not any better. And it was a, it was a uh, voluntary recall. And uh, if you look online, Menards apparently was told about it. At least somebody posted that they were. And yeah, I haven't heard anything. I haven't got any letters or nothing. That these have been an issue. And, you know, if I were to call a plumber, they would have called... You know, five, seven hundred dollars for something to be so stupid like this to be fixed. So, lovely that nobody put out a big thing about it. I'm about to see if I can find any information on Menards, if they actually did anything or not. So, we're going to take and disconnect the thermocouple and move that sensor and shove it back in and see what happens. Okay, so I just removed the thermocouple, and what I did, I got a little small flat tip screwdriver and got right here and just gently started to move this away. Now, what I've noticed, it looks like it's oxidized. It's like they didn't use the right proper, you know, ingredients. Like, you don't want copper and certain material like aluminum to touch so yeah interesting I wonder if you just took some sandpaper to this and uh, stuck it back in see if I would fix it or if it's a fuse you know if it's blonde, we can always take a voltmeter and measure. There's two little things here. Take a voltmeter and measure it. And see, why don't we do that? Just to show that the main meter works. 
I have zero ohms here. That's good continuity. And I'm going to go across the fuse. I have my meter leads on it. And I put my meter lead on these two contacts on the back port. And I got zero L. So that means it's overload. So that fuse right there is blown, it's bad. So what we're going to do from here, we're going to just stick this back up inside there as far as possible. Make sure it's making contact somehow. It's like that. And then we're going to thread it in. Because that fuse right there was just meant to prevent people from being scalded. That it would blow if the tank was above 186 degrees. Which obviously, since they have massive recall, they put an underrated fuse on this. And this is not, this is the problem. So, I got the power light lit, and want to see what happens. I'm watching the video as reference for how long I got the power light lit. Give myself some time here, how long I need to hold this. Right now we're at 26 seconds and counting. By no means am I telling you to bypass this safety feature. I am simply telling you there is a recall on this gas valve and they need to fix it. We're at 49 seconds, we're at 50 seconds. And it says to wait a minute, so we're gonna do the full minute. Make sure. And there we go. My finger is off the button. And we have a gas valve that's working. And I now have a ignition. Now, hopefully, if you are able to take and replace your gas valve, hopefully you have the receipt in order to get something brand new from this. And if it, everything worked out for you, great. I hope everything works out for everybody. Thanks for watching, guys. I look forward to your comments, and we will see you next time.